Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today I have a piece of spalted maple. It's uh, 8 inches by 14 inches, inch and a quarter thick on one side, inch and a half on the other side, rough edges, couple of bug holes, not much. I've marked the center spot here, and I'm just going to set a a hole to drill for my woodworm screw and we're gonna get it mounted up and we're gonna make what? What are we gonna make? I don't know. Maybe a uh, winged bowl? Maybe a tray of some sort? I, I just don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Let me get my mask and face shield on, sharpen up my 5 8 inch bowl gouge and we're gonna get to making something. Stand by. I can only get up to about 600 RPM. I want to see how close I am to that edge. Pretty dang close. Huh. This is reminding me of that four-legged square bowl that I did. It's just counter intuitive to uh, how you have to do this. I think I'm going to go ahead and, and come up here. I'm going to I'm going to get this gone. Well, you just don't know till you try, that's all. Well, it's just a puzzle, isn't it? I'm going to keep coming out here further. Kind of pretty wood. I, I, I wish I knew what it was I'm trying to do here. I want to keep these natural edges. Know that. And as it is now, I've got three feet that are the same height. One, two, three. This one's not there. What to do? Well, I gotta go further. I guess, uh, I guess it'll set here and I'll, I'll just turn it into a winged bowl. So I'm going to start removing material out here. Unless it sets on that, I don't know. What's that look like? Well, kind of cool. Yeah, I guess this will be our, our base for it to sit on. Glad I stopped. I'm going to see if I can get a little closer out here. and pick the speed up in it. Oh yeah. About a thousand RPM. I have to keep in mind that I still have to flatten off the top. I don't know how far out it is. So I, I can't go too thin here because I need some working room on top. Now this is kind of fun. I, I really want to go up higher. 
but again then I'm dealing with the top but still I need to I need to get up higher in here thin down this edge I think I really did much there. Let's see, what am I trying to do? Problem is the tailstock's in my way, but I don't really want to get rid of it just yet. Maybe a uh, sweat back can get me in there a little tighter. Probably good. I'm about three eighths of an inch thick here, and by the time I do something on the top, I'll be down to a quarter or so, and that'll be about right. Not the smoothest cut, but I just can't quite get in there the way I want to. Tail stock. Well, it's not bad. And this is a soft maple. This sands up pretty easily. So let's see. Let's see if I can just get a smoother cut out here. Just take a little bit off. Find it. Well, that's better. Well, that's the dangest thing, isn't it? I think I'm done out there. Let me think for a minute. Okay, I figured it out. I'm going with a tenon, and the reason is, is because right now, uh, what it's going to set on is the same height as this. Now, I could cut this down. I could put a recess in, I guess, but in cutting this down, I'm going to form a tenon anyway, so I'm, I'm going with a tenon. And I've removed the tail stock so that I can shape the outside of this a little bit better. So I'm going to work on this right here first, just clean it up a little bit. Okay, that's good. We'll start working on shaping the outside of the bowl and creating the tenon. Okay, I have clearance. I think I'm going to switch to a little smaller gouge to try and get up in here and get this cleaned up a little bit. We'll try a half inch bowl gouge. Oh, much better. Much better. How am I going to sand this thing? Forgot to think about that part, didn't we? We're going to do it. We know that. We just don't know how yet. But I'm going with that. And therefore, time for sanding. Well, some time has passed. And I've had a chance to think about how I want to sand this. Because there's more air here than there is wood. And I don't think a two inch sanding disc on a power drill is going to do the trick. I think I'm going to get caught everywhere I go. So I'm going to sand it entirely with my Sandoflex sander. Uh, I now have 80 through 320 grit and that's just going to have to do on this. I can't think of any other way to sand it except hand sanding and I'm not going to hand sand it. I don't like to. I'm not going to. You can't make me. So what I'm going to do Turn this on at about 350 RPM. I'm going to get my mask on, which I don't have on yet because I want to talk to you. And as it's coming down on this side, I'll be going up against it. Like that. And I can get all the way in the, down inside there. And I can get all the way down inside there. And I can get all this. So I think that's going to work. And I'm going to start with 80 grit, 
and I'm going to work up through 320. And I'm also going to use it on the on these sides, which have been cut, but they cut very, very long time ago. And I'm going to use it on the natural ends. So I think that's going to do a pretty darn good job, and I'm looking forward to getting it done and getting some finish on here. So let me get my mask on, and we'll get to sanding. I think I can also do it in reverse if I go back that way and, and place my sander over here. Yep, that's going to work. So that's what it's going to look like and that's what I'm going to be doing for the next hour or so. And I'll bring you back when it's time to get some finish on here. Well that was a bit of an ordeal, I'll tell you what. I should also tell you that uh, I did end up using my two inch disc sander just from here to here because I could. Uh, I tried it out here and that didn't work for a squat, but it worked well in here. So anyway, it's time for finish. Yippee. And I am going with the Howard Feed and Wax again because I like it really brings out that grain and once I get it spread all over I'll take a brush and brush these uh, bug holes so that the color matches. It does not have bug holes everywhere like this side does and that side doesn't. Kind of weird. Picky bugs I guess. I did microwave it like I normally do when when there's uh, bug activity or evidence of bug activity on a piece. I don't take any chances. I really, I really like this piece so far. It's got a lot going for it. A lot of different, a lot of different things to look at. I especially like this. And I won't be putting finish in here. I'll do that from the top side because it's much larger on the top. It goes back to about here. And speaking of top, I can't wait to get to it to see, see what this is going to end up looking like. But so far, it's pretty cool, and I like it. And these, this is probably the best part about the whole thing, so far. And that was an accident. Remember I was coming up here, and I was just going to come all the way in. And have it set on this. And I got up here to this point, and I thought, well, you know what? That looks pretty good. I think I'll just stop there. And that's, that's how a lot of this stuff goes. You just never know. Don't get in a rush to remove everything as fast as you can. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's a lesson I learned long ago and learned it over and over and over again. You gotta know when to stop. Probably the most important thing I've learned in wood turning is you gotta know when to stop. At least in this kind of wood turning. Now if you're using a nice kiln dried piece of two by eight or something, more power to you, do whatever you wanna do. But when you've got natural edges and bark on and all that sort of thing, you just don't want to take all that away, or at least I don't want to. I want to leave as much of that as I possibly can. It just makes such a huge difference. I really like these two natural edges and then the two cut edges. Nice contrast. So I'll get this uh, finished up. Let it set for 20, 30 minutes, something like that. Come back out and buff it up. And then I'll bring you back when it's time to turn this around and start making a bowl. So far all we have is a bottom. Couldn't put a thing in it if you wanted to. See you in a bit. So this is kind of like standing in front of a propeller at 1200 RPM. Kind of spooky. Hope it doesn't hit the camera when it blows. In fact, I should probably move that camera. Nah.
I'm gonna get a pencil and mark out my circle because uh, it looks like it should be here, but it's not. It's it's clear in here. That's the top of the bowl right there. So I'm gonna make a. I want to draw a circle so I don't start digging into my feet. Looks like about top of the bowl, right about there. I'm going to move you, because just in case it does go flying, I really don't want to buy another camera. Hold on. I've drawn a circle at about where the uh, top of the bowl should be. But I want to work my way in here and put a, uh, a bead around the top of this bowl. It actually actually comes out here further, but, but that's okay, because I want room here for a little bead at the at the edge of the bowl. So let me grab my freshly sharpened 5 8 inch bowl gouge, get my mask and face shield on, and we're going to get to making this a bowl. Turning at 1200 RPM. is getting pretty thin over here but got to do what you got to do yeah okay I can live with that. How thin do we get? Thin over here especially. Oh boy. Wiggly. Got the wigglies. But it's still there. Ha! Huh, I like it. I don't dare go any thinner. I can, instead of coming all the way out here, I can gradually go in from about here and, and raise that up a little bit. But then maybe that's enough. But maybe not. Hey now, good job Phil, oh nice, good going buddy. If you like standing about 8 inches in front of a spinning propeller then this is a project for you, highly recommend it. If you don't like it, don't do it. I just want to try and refine this bead a little bit, it's not quite round. That's good. Let's make the bowl. I don't think we're there yet, but it can't can't be very deep, that's for sure. Well, I got about a half inch. We can go further than that for sure. check the wall. Yeah, um, I can go more on the wall too. It's starting to flex a little is the problem. Just about there. I can't get a good angle with the tailstock here. Yeah, I just can't. I just can't get there. So I'm gonna have to remove the tailstock. I don't know if I feel good about uh, continuing to turn at 1,200 without the tailstock. What's the worst that could happen? I'm gonna make sure this is good and tight. 
I know, I'm not looking for an answer to what's the worst that could happen. Never mind about that. Okay, that's thin enough on the side. How about the bottom? Oh boy. Well, we're about an eighth of an inch. Sides and bottom. So, I guess we'll remove that. Okay, let me put a fresh edge on my scraper and we will scrape. Nice, time for sanding. Well, I thought I'd try sanding this. this. This part just scares me. It's pretty stable, but if I got it, something caught on there, it's not gonna stick with me. It's just thin is all. It's not cracked or anything like that. It's just really thin. So I might just have to hand sand this part. Hate that. Uh, but I can use my two inch disc sander in here. So I'm gonna be working at this for the next hour or two, sanding it up. And I'll bring you back when it's time to put some finish on there. We'll get this puppy wrapped up today. Well, that was more of a pain in the butt than I anticipated, I'll tell you what. It took, uh, it took about two hours to get this all sanded up. But now it's smooth as silk. And I'm really liking this piece. So I'll let this dry 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Come back out, buff it up. Then it'll be time to turn it around and remove that tenon. Yippee! We're getting close. Alright, let's see if we can get that tenon off of there. I've mounted a block of wood in my chuck. And then I'm going to put a piece of non-slip material there. And then the bowl. I still have my hole here for reference. I'll bring up the tailstock. And that should get me centered pretty well. Bring up the tool rest. And I'll grab a half inch standard grind bowl gouge and we'll commence to removing this tenon. Let's see, we'll turn it about 400 RPM, 500 RPM to start. Check for clearance. And it looks like we've got clearance. So I'll just keep working it away. Slow and easy. Now I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch swept back grind to get rid of the rest of this tenon. That ought to do. Here we go. I'm going to slow the speed down now about 350. Just taking my time, no rush. Now I'm going to slow it down to about 200. I'm just going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl to complete the cut. I've got my right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And then when that little nub stops turning, then we'll know we're there. Like that. Easy peasy. As long as you take your time, don't get in a rush. Then I'll take it over here to the workbench and sand this area up. Oh, 
Well, what do you know? There it is. One eight by 14 rectangular natural edge bowl in the books. It's an inch and a quarter tall, one and one quarter inches tall. Got this cool feature here. Natural edge. I don't know what to call that edge. Obviously it's a cut edge, but it sure has some odd coloring. I, I don't have any idea what would cause that. I sanded and sanded and that's as far as it's going to go. It's, it's black. Natural edge and cut edge. Bottom finished up pretty good. Looks good to me. I actually like the bottom as much as I like the top on this one. Finish turned out nice. Got a little bit of ribbon grain going on in there. It's a cool piece. If you like this video, thumbs up please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, I truly appreciate that. Thank you very kindly. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. Your comments are always welcome and I respond to all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop. Signing off.